We want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. We're glad that you chose to be a part of this study on today. We're going to begin our time in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God answers prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just thankful for this day, for this opportunity to study your word, to be numbered among your people, to be part of the land of the living. We ask your blessings upon each and every person who will engage in this study. Let your word register within our souls. We ask that you would change us, transform us. Thank you for the privilege of prayer and the power of the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We uh, just look forward to being able to get into God's word on today. We continue our study from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 will be our focus for today, and we are in verses 26 and 27 today. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and verse number 27. If you have missed any part of this series, we encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel and you can find. Uh, the other parts of this series from Romans chapter 8 and our entire study so far on the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, and we're looking at verses 26 and 27 on today. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, uh, not just our weakness, but the text says our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The verse starts off with likewise, which connects it to the previous section of scripture. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses uh, in the same way that hope helps us endure in times of suffering. So does the spirit help in our weakness. Uh, he helps in all of the weaknesses that we have. He, he helps us. Now, the Spirit is fulfilling the role that Jesus discussed with his apostles as recorded in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Uh, Paul here says that the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Uh, what are our weaknesses? Well, uh, we often don't endure like we should. That's a human weakness. We don't suffer. We don't wait as we should. We don't show the patience and the hope that we should. The weakness in our life or the weaknesses in our lives are not just weaknesses in prayer, but a weakness in life itself. And so the Spirit helps us uh, that, that word help is an interesting word. Uh, it, it is what's known as a double compound, meaning that three words are put together to form one word. Uh, our English word, nevertheless, is an example of a double compound word. Three words put together to form one word. And uh, we, we, we see the need for uh, help in our weaknesses. And this, this word really gets into what it means to help, this double compound word. Uh, the word is uh, there for you, and we, we break it down soon, anti-lambanami or lambanami. Uh, we see three distinct words, and you, you'll have those uh, broken down. It speaks of the action of a person coming to the aid of someone carrying a load by taking hold 
over against that person. That's the ante, the other side. Uh, you are on the other side of the load. So the person who is helping does not take the entire load, but helps the person who is carrying the load. See, when I'm spiritually weak, it is not that the Holy Spirit prays in my place. Instead, when I am praying in my weakness, the Spirit comes along and positions himself opposite me and helps me to carry my load. When I want to give up, the Spirit encourages me to endure. He comes along in my weaknesses in life and my weaknesses in prayer, and he helps me. Uh, he's in a position opposite me, on the other side of me, helping me to carry this heavy load. Uh, but not only does he position himself opposite me, but the Holy Spirit is the opposite of me in my weakness. He's the anti-me. Uh, he is the opposite of weak. He is strong. Uh, the weaker I am, the more help I need carrying my load. Uh, anybody ever been so weak that you felt you couldn't carry any of your load? The, the spirit comes along and encourages you to pick up, get up, carry your load, but when it gets heavy for you, the Spirit says, I will do the heavy lifting. See, when someone helps you, they don't do the job for you. They do the job with you. In life, the Spirit does not do the job for us. He does the job with us and through us. What, what do you mean? Well, when tragedy hits the family, when sick, sickness is knocking at the door, when your heart is broken, when your faith is being tested, you still put forth the effort to push through. You still pray. You still have a conversation with God. And what the Spirit does is that the Spirit helps me by meeting my deficiency with His sufficiency. Uh, the Spirit helps me by meeting my deficiency with his sufficiency. In our weakness, we don't know what to pray. Uh, there are times when uh, we don't know what we should ask. We don't know what we should pray for uh, in that situation. Uh, do I pray for healing? Do I pray for acceptance? Uh, do I pray for justice? Or do I pray for mercy? Do I pray that God will change the situation or do I pray that God will change me? I'm confused about what I should pray for. I really don't know what I should pray for. Uh, it, it's not so much the text saying we don't know how to pray. Uh, Jesus taught us how to pray in the model prayer. Scripture teaches us and gives us examples of how to pray, but there are times when we don't know what to pray for. There's something specific that I need in my life to deal with this weakness that I'm facing right now. I know I need something. I just don't know what that something is. I don't know what to ask for when my life is turned upside down. I know I need to pray. And I know I need deliverance. But I have no clue what I should be asking God for at this specific moment in my life. Just can't you just can't put your finger on it. You can't wrap your mind around it. The pain is too deep. Your, your mind is too confused. Your spirit is too weak. You know something is missing, but you don't know what. So all you can say is, Lord, help me. In my weaknesses, the Holy Spirit himself steps in and helps me carry my load to God. In those moments, the Spirit himself actually uh, is actively interceding for us. He's appealing to God on my behalf. Remember that the Spirit is positioned where I need the most help. He is in my inner being because in my inner being, that's where I need the most help. So he knows what I need 
better than I do because he's positioned in the place to help me. So when God the Father searches the heart and makes connection with God the Holy Spirit, he, he, he makes this connection, he, he searches the heart and he knows the mind of the Spirit who lives in our heart. The Holy Spirit has complete access to the heart. His knowledge is direct. It's not dependent upon uh, our ability to articulate our concerns. The spirit knows he dwells within us. So God searches the heart. God examines the heart. God knows the nature and the character of the spirit who is in the heart or our mind. And the spirit comes to my rescue and appeals to God on my behalf according to the will of God. See, the Spirit is not going to ask the Father for anything that goes against the nature of God. When the Spirit intercedes for me, what happens is a beautiful picture. When the Spirit intercedes for me, divinity gets together with divinity to talk about my issues. I don't know what the Spirit says to the Father. And even if we could eavesdrop on the conversation, we wouldn't be able to understand the language in which God speaks to God. Uh, it's uh, only understood as groanings that cannot be uttered because God is speaking to God. And what language does God speak to himself? Uh, if I could hear it, I wouldn't understand it because I'm not God. But when divinity gets together with divinity and they talk shop, when they talk about my issues, uh, they have this connection, this conversation to help me in my weakness. And although I don't understand it, I feel good about the outcome because God is talking to God in God's language and there can be no miscommunication between God and God. Uh, there can be no sense where God heard God say the wrong thing. The, the spirit misread the father. The father didn't quite understand the spirit. So because God is talking to God and there's perfect understanding in the perfectly united relationship between the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, I can rest assured and you can rest assured that all things will work together for good to those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Because the spirit who is God has come to your rescue and come to my rescue, interceded on our behalf according to the will of God. Aren't you glad that even when you don't know what to pray, the Spirit of God intercedes for you and takes your feeble, mumbling, stumblings, and disjointed thoughts, doctors them up, and expresses the heart to the Father. And when the Spirit intercedes for us, He does so according to the will of God so that whatever the spirit asks and whatever he talks to god about we know that it is according and in line with god's will what a blessing to have the holy spirit as a part of our lives reflect on this or pray about it what are ways that you've seen the will of god show up in your life? How has the Spirit helped you in your weaknesses? Are there times when you've prayed for something and the answer was no? And at the time, you couldn't understand why God would say no. But looking back on it, you're glad that the Spirit interceded and that the answer was no because the no was according to the will of God. Think about it in your time in prayer and look forward to seeing you next time. And as we prepare for next time, we want you to uh, just engage in 
a study of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. That's basically the entire chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, and reflect on uh, the Holy Spirit and his role there in that text. Uh, we love you. May God bless you and keep you. And we praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit.